Hi folks, the Filipina P here. And today I've got a simple question for my male viewers. Do you need a woman? Well, on the surface, it seems like a simple question anyway, but the subject can quickly head into the gray area. For most of you, the answer is a qualified yes. Humans have an instinctive need of companionship from the opposite sex, but there are plenty of exceptions to the rule. Some of us are asexual. Some of us can only tolerate the opposite sex in small doses and for specific purposes. Some people have been burned so many times that the mere thought of the opposite sex makes them physically ill. And some people just prefer to be alone. But the vast majority of us would choose to be with a partner. And some people even feel like their happiness is directly tied to their relationship status. They simply can't see themselves as anything other than one half of a couple. We all know someone like this, who goes from one relationship to another with lightning speed. And the thought of spending a night, or a month, or a year by themselves, fills them with panic and dread. They tend to marry early and often, in an endless quest for the one. Sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. Hopefully, most people lie somewhere in between, enjoying the closeness that a relationship offers but not letting it define them as a prerequisite for a happy life. When you're young, you're usually just swept along by your emotions. You're not really planning for a certain type of relationship. You just fall into whatever comes along and try to make it work by compromising where necessary to keep the wheels on the cart. Some of you are lucky enough to get it right the first time and your marriage is one of those epic sagas that you tell your great-grandchildren about how you and grandma stayed together for 60 years through thick and thin. Sometimes a marriage doesn't work at all, and within a year or two, you can see the glaring problems in your relationship, and things dissolve quickly. But even more often, your partnership becomes like a business arrangement. It limps along, perhaps for the sake of the children you had, until there's an empty nest and all the glue that held the fragile nest together finally falls apart. It's not until you become a little older, more mature, wiser, and learn from your past mistakes that you finally get a good idea of what would make you happy. The type of woman, the type of lifestyle, and the type of relationship that would make it all worthwhile. Your needs and desires have probably changed quite a bit since your 20s but you can still see him more clearly now and have a much better idea of how you want to arrange things. So let's assume that you're a mature man who's wanting to give a relationship one more try, but on your terms this time. Let's also assume that finding a woman isn't a problem. Maybe you're in a situation or in a part of the world where starting a relationship with a new woman is easy, say, in a foreign country like the Philippines. You have an opportunity to start completely over, from scratch, to avoid the same mistakes. But you still have some choices to make, because there are as many different types of relationships as there are colors in the rainbow. The setup you had before is irrelevant, because now you get to write your own rules. You don't have to worry about what other people think, and you don't always have to worry about making society or your family happy. Just yourself and hopefully your mate, if you choose to have one. So what kind of relationships can you create and how well do they work here in my country? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm gonna describe the ones I see most frequently and tell you how they usually turn out. The hungry fisherman. Even a man who comes here with the intention of finding a long-term mate can end up spending years as a hungry fisherman who prefers to cast a wide net and enjoy as many tasty fish as he can catch while waiting for his blue marlin. He might not have had a chance to go sport fishing in quite some time before he got here and is in no hurry to turn the boat around just yet. Because foreigners are almost expected to date heavily while they're looking for the right partner, this is a popular strategy that does, in many cases, work out just fine. Men often report dating more women here than they dated in their entire lives back home. And there's nothing wrong with being picky. After all, 
it's your bait and your pole. Just be sure to settle on a first mate long before your boat becomes too old and leaky to attract a loyal crew. Or the only thing the captain will be going down on is his ship, alone. The Unicorn Hunter In contrast to the hungry fisherman, the Unicorn Hunter is only after the one. He might have already been tracking her from a long distance, maybe even online, for quite a period of time. If unicorns laid eggs, he'd be placing them all in one basket because this guy has blinders on when it comes to any other women. Unfortunately, all too often those eggs go rotten when he finds out that the unicorn he was chasing was just a horse with a dunce cap. Not to say that these relationships can work long term, but in my experience, men often don't end up with the women they fixate on back in their home countries. And it's usually better to ride the unicorn a while, before ending your mythic quest. Mr. Meat and Potatoes This is the kind of man that comes here looking for a traditional husband and wife relationship. When he finds the one he's interested in, he marries her. No strings attached, no unusual arrangements, no cheating, no drama, no playing around. It's an old-fashioned, salt-of-the-earth kind of union. And here in the Philippines, it's the gold standard in relationships that almost every Filipina is looking for. Can it work? You bet it can. If that's what you're looking for, I can't think of a better place to find it. Will you be my friend? Having friends is a good thing. Having benefits is a good thing. But having friends with benefits here in the Philippines is only gonna get you a lot of one-night stands and temporary companionship with women who are hoping for something more out of a relationship. If your only connection to a woman is hanging out and having sex, it won't be long before someone else is examining her benefits package. It may work for a while, but you offer her no future, which is a huge deal here, so she won't be hanging around for long. And you're playing a game of musical chairs that's fun while it lasts, but could be hell when you find you have nowhere to sit. You could suddenly try to find a permanent partner, but it won't be as easy to find someone last minute that really cares for you and will stick with you when the music's winding down. Cohabitation Nation Here's one that I see a lot of here in the Philippines. It can be just like the traditional Mr. Meat and Potatoes, but without the paperwork. It's the favorite relationship for gun-shy foreigners who no longer trust the institution of marriage. And it also happens because so many Filipinas are still legally married but never got annulments. This lifestyle has a lot more status for a Filipina than the friends with benefits set up. Because by all appearances, they're a married couple. She'd love to have the marriage certificate and your last name. But this relationship is the next best thing. It's important to mention that if she's still married or has children, this type of arrangement can get you into legal trouble with her ex but people still do it all the time. No one's eyebrows are raised, and it's an acceptable lifestyle. Does it work long term? Yup, but chances are, your Filipino partner will never stop trying to get the ring on her finger. Here we go again. It might not be your fault at all. Maybe it's just bad luck, or maybe it's just the way you like it. For whatever reason, You've had a stream of long-term relationships that last until the flame dies, and then it's back to the drawing board. Serial monogamy is everywhere, and some people believe it's the natural way of things, that we were never meant to be permanently attached to someone else. Most serial monogamists say they want a lifelong partner, but just can't seem to find one. Well, if that's the case with you, I can almost guarantee that the Philippines will be just the cure the doctor ordered. On the other hand, if it's the relationship style you prefer, then you'll be a happy camper here. Because there are plenty of women here that would love to have a chance to change your mind and lock you down. Three, four, it's an open door. And finally, we come to the relationship style that I get a lot of questions about. I don't know if you're interested in having one of these, or just interested in hearing about one of these. But many of you folks ask me if they're common in the Philippines. I'm talking about poly relationships. 
polygamy, polyamory, polyandry, and open relationships. These are all different things with different definitions, and I can do a series of videos on this subject alone. But to simplify it, they all have one thing in common. They involve more than two people. So, are they common? Well, most of the time, people don't advertise their poly relationships, so it can be hard to put a number on it. But I can say that I've run into more than a few couples who welcome other people into their bedroom. But I suppose what you really want to know is what Filipinas think of these relationships. And what I can tell you is this. While I've met some Filipinas who were all for it, I've also run across some that just did it to keep their partners happy. And there's the key to the question of, does it work? The couples I've met that were both happy with the arrangement had secure partnerships that were exciting and fulfilling and had no intentions of returning to a vanilla relationship. The women I talked to that were just trying to keep their partners happy were miserable. And anyone who understands how jealous Filipinas are can understand why. Now, I personally have no issues with what consenting adults do behind closed doors. But one thing is clear. If you're not both on the same page, it's time to read different books. So those are the most common relationship strategies that you'll find here in the Philippines, along with my opinion of how well they work here. But whatever type of arrangement you're looking for, I have one final piece of advice. Be happy with yourself first before trying to make someone else happy to be with you. Creating the best version of yourself will pay you dividends all the way down the line. And with that, it's time to say goodbye for a few days while I cook you up something fresh for the weekend. Till next time, folks. If you think about it, I'm kind of like Wonder Woman who said, It's about what you believe and I believe in love. Only love will truly save the world. And I'm here to help you find that love and companionship by bridging the gap between East and West and helping us understand each other where cultural differences might get in the way. All I ask in return is that you give a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and share this video with a friend. And why not watch some of my other videos too? Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an invisible plane to catch, if you can just figure out where I parked it.